When we are using jobs and recording jobs and saving them to file, we want them to be able to be taken off file again later and filmed again if necessary. And we want to know a reference point about which that file has been taken. If everything we filmed, we only filmed once, it wouldn't matter. But if we need to film things multiple times, then we need a reference point for every axis of the machine. This reference point could be called zero. This reference point could be called home. With the bolt robot, the arm itself, there are encoders on the axes that are absolute. And these encoders mean that when we turn on the machine, it knows where it is. And those motors can go to the home zero position easily. Other axes need zeroing. If we were to look at our focus axis, the zeroing settings for our focus axis is a direct zero. This means that when we set up a lens and create a focus axis for that lens, we need to be able to put the lens in the correct place each time we use that lens and directly zero. Usually this is done at infinity. When we put the lens on, we put the lens at infinity, we engage the motor and we directly zero. This means that the motor is at its home zero position at infinity and then the focus axis can be correctly set up in alignment with where that zero is. If we didn't have that home zero, we wouldn't know where our focus axis was at any time. The track axis that we've just added to this bolt also needs a zero system. <clears throat> this axis has a zeroing setting that says it's a datum zero. This means the track axis each morning when we turn on the machine needs to go and find its zero position. And the way we arrange this is we have a datum zero magnet on the racking in the track. This datum zero magnet we put in position and then we can search for that magnet and come off that magnet to a chosen zero position. The zeroing velocity here is the speed at which it searches for the magnet. The zero offset is the distance it comes off having found the magnetic edge and then checked the magnetic edge against a single line on the track encoder. This single line on the track encoder is called the zero marker pulse. The zeroing sequence for the track is, it goes backwards at 10 centimeters a second until it finds the magnet. It comes forward to the magnet. It then goes and looks for two zero marker pulses and then does a zero offset, at which point it says, this is home zero. Let's watch it do this. Track, zero home. It's looking for the magnet. There's the magnet, counting zero marker pulses. Found two of them, going to a home zero position. Calling that zero, the track is now at zero. Because the track is now at zero, when I do the same shot again tomorrow, it's in the same place and will match. If I need to do 10 multi-passes, I can turn my machine off between them and turn it on again, home zero, and it will match. The other thing that 
this gives us is a reference point for the distance to my hardware limits. I have to have hardware limits on the track that stop the machine if it goes too far. I need these for safety reasons. Now I'm going to drive the machine forward and I'm going to deliberately hit the hardware limit or limit switch which is on the front of the machine on the track. I've just hit the limit switch and I am at 403 centimetres forward of my datum zero switch or my home position. My maximum limit within my axis at the time said 500. This is obviously incorrect. So now I can enable that, drive back off it, and if I want to now I can go left click, right click, store and save that position which is just back of my zero position. Save, apply that. And now, when I drive back and drive forward, even though I am trying to make it go run forward, it stops on the software limit, which I have set just short of my hardware limit. Each time rail is put down, I need to put in a datum limit so I can find home, and I need to put end limits on for safety to stop the machine should it go too far. If I only have one piece of rail, I can, if necessary, zero from the end limit by changing this to limit zero. But normally I would use a datum switch and datum zero. The only reason I need to find home for my track and for my rotate, as for my focus, is because those axes have incremental encoders on and do not know where they are when you turn them on. This allows you to have a great deal of travel, many, many motor turns, without bothering to come to an end. This has been a Mark Roberts motion control training video. Thank you for watching.